can't take this anymore. I just can't take it anymore. Can't take the pressure. I don't know what I'm doing. What is she holding in her hand? What kind of cards is she holding? I just can't take the pressure. Paul, I really hope you're taking this seriously. I mean, we leave for Vegas in a few hours. I am. I, I've never played this before. I don't know. I... Are you sure this is how they play it? Trust me. I've been playing for years. I know all the secrets, all the experts. I've played them all. I've beat them all. It's time we go to Vegas and all show right, what we've okay, got. Okay, okay. Do you have a three? Go fish. <clears throat> American Air Gunner is sponsored by Pyramid Air. Air guns are not just for kids anymore. Umarex, your premium air gun supplier. And these fine sponsors. I like the tall girls. So what do you think, folks? Can you see Crystal on one of these things? Hi there folks and welcome back to American Air Gunner. My name is Paul Capello. And I'm Crystal Ackley. And we're here today at the 2010 SHOT Show. We've got some very exciting new air gun products to show you from Umarex, from uh, Crossman and Pyramid Air. And I think we'll start at the Pyramid Air booth here and show you their Evonix line of rifles. Some great new stuff coming from them. Where are you going to start, Crystal? I'm going to head up to Umarex. To Umarex? Yeah. Cool. I'll check out the stuff here at Pyramid Air. And then you want to meet in the middle somewhere Crossman upstairs? Crossman booth. At the Crossman booth? Yeah. Very cool. Meanwhile, I'll leave some autographs over here on our photos. So maybe we'll get the word out about what American Air Gunner is all about. It's really nice, Paul. You like that one? <laughs> I like it, but I kind of like mine better. Oh, very nice. All right, <laughs> let's go check out the stuff from Evonix. The Windy City is by far the most interesting new addition to the Evonix line of air rifles. This pre-charged pneumatic air gun sports a shrouded barrel for stealthy small game takedown or for peaceful backyard target shooting. This 10-shot side lever repeater also has a removable bottle reservoir in place of the more common under-barrel tube. A quick-fill, foster-type fitting does away with the need for special adapters and just take a look at that stock. Very nice. The powerful Evonix AR6 also gets a makeover with a shrouded barrel to quiet the shots. Stealth is definitely the buzzword these days and Pyramid Air is listening to their customers. On the Springer side of things, we have the Air Venturi Bronco. This youth-sized brake barrel air gun was designed by Tom Gaylord and Pyramid Air with younger shooters and new shooters in mind. Crystal got a chance to check out the Bronco, and we'll have that segment for you in the very next episode. Meanwhile, over at the very impressive Umarex booth, Crystal got her hands on the hot new Steel Storm BB Repeater. It features full and semi-auto modes, a 300-round reservoir, and built-in 30-round magazine. The Steel Storm uses two 12-gram CO2 cartridges found in the removable mag. This one, folks, is gonna be fun. At Crossman, the buzzword is definitely nitro piston technology. Many of their Benjamin brake barrel air rifles now sport this nitrogen-filled gas piston instead of a steel spring. What's that mean to the shooter? Smoother cocking, functions in all weather, no spring torque, and it's reportedly 70% quieter than other brake barrels. With the exception of the Air Venturi Bronco, many of these new guns were not available to test out at the time of this report, but you'll be seeing all these great new air guns and more in future episodes. 
After the break, join Paul Cray and I as we show you how to mount and sight in a scope on a pre-charged pneumatic air rifle. Hi there folks, I'm joining Paul Cray today to talk about how to mount and sight in a scope for field target rifles. Our candidate here is the Air Arms EV2. This is a fantastic looking rifle, Paul. Tell me about this rifle. What makes this a field target rifle? Well, let's look at the, at the stock first. If you notice right down here, we have a knee riser. It's mm -hmm. adjustable for height. Adjustable? Yeah, because we shoot primarily in the sitting position. Okay. We have, at the back here, we have an adjustable cheek piece. Again, it's right. a personal choice, you know, personal sure. rifle fit. We have the adjustable butt plate right here. Right. And if you just look at this piece of equipment, yeah. it looks amazing. It does. It looks like it means business here. Absolutely. The accuracy and reliability on something like this is phenomenal. Really wow. Is. Now it has a couple little details here I've never seen in a rifle before. Is this specific to field target as well? It has a little uh, scope level here. I guess that's to prevent can't. Exactly. Yeah. Again, because this rifle was designed for field target, there are we shoot outdoors primarily mm -hmm. and the ground is usually uneven. So you are unaware that you're actually canting which resulting with your shots will go left sure. to the right, so we, we don't want that. Now, who was this designed by, this rifle? Nick Jenkinson. Nick Jenkinson. Multiple world champion. Yeah. Wow. So he knows what he's talking about when it comes to field target. Wow, he's added these great little details. In yeah. fact, in the front there, we have uh, yeah. something for holding a wind flag or a wind... Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a simple detail, but mm -hmm. it's a, everybody has one when you yeah. shoot field target, so why not have it on the rifle when yeah. you purchase it? So, wow. yeah, you hang a little piece of feather or a piece of thread. A feather, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, great. And it's just something to give us an indication of which way the wind is blown, and it's strength so right. we can hold off. We have a Hawk Sidewinder 30 here. I've never seen this scope before. Oh, this is a beauty. It's is a beauty. It? Yeah, absolutely. Tell me, would this be something that uh, a budget conscious person absolutely. could put on a absolutely. field target? Rifle? Absolutely. And again, because uh, field target is growing in popularity, mm -hmm. a lot of manufacturers are coming out with scopes pre-equipped with the accessories necessary to shoot field target. Really? Like yeah. what, for instance? Well, if I look, you have the lighted reticle. Lighted this. reticle, yeah. You have two colors. You have uh, green and red. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. adjustable. You also have the uh, sunshade. Sunshade, which is you know, indispensable. Absolutely. You have the larger side wheel, right. which we'll go into in greater detail okay. what actually its function is. And then we have this very cool device, which is a pointer. And again, we'll go into further detail. All right, let's have a little indicator that. there. Yeah, exactly. All right, exactly. terrific. Okay, so I guess, Paul, our first step is to put the rings on the rifle. Yep. And then we'll get the scope on. Then we'll do our final adjustments and final setting in of the scope up in the air lodge. We'll sight in, we'll shoot some targets. Yep. And we'll wrap it up. Absolutely. Okay. All right, we're ready to take our first steps here. But before we even begin to do any type of maintenance on a rifle, what do we do, Paul? Well, make sure that the rifle is safe. Safety is priority here, and in this particular rifle, we can open the bolt. We can clearly see that there are, mm -hmm. there's no pellet in there, and we leave the bolt open, so there's no danger of accidental discharge. Right, and folks, if you're ever wondering if your rifle is loaded or not, assume that it always is, take it outside, point it in a safe direction, and fire it off. Next, we had to degrease the scope rings. Oils left by the manufacturing process can cause your scope to slip over time, especially on magnum-powered spring rifles. Get in the habit of doing this, even on light recoil rated rifles and pistols. It's a good practice. After that, the scope ring bases were finger tightened on the dovetail, the scope was placed on them, and the straps lightly tightened. At this point, leave it loose enough to adjust for eye relief. Once in the air lodge, Paul secured the rifle to a shooting rest like this Caldwell lead sled. Next, he dropped a plumb line about 10 meters downrange. Once the rifle was perfectly leveled at the table using this cool gadget, he made final adjustments to his eye relief and rotated the scope until the vertical reticle was in alignment with the plumb line. Now watch closely the pattern Paul uses to tighten the screws on the rings. This makes sure that the pressure is distributed evenly on the scope tube. Make sure the space between the strap and base of the rings is as even as possible. If you want, you can use a feeler gauge to do this, or just eyeball it. And remember, don't over tighten those screws, or you might wind up crushing the scope tube. Paul was now ready to take his first sight in shots. Not surprisingly, with an air gun of this quality, he was already on paper. 
first Paul adjusted the windage, rotating the turret until his shots were perfectly centered on the target. Then, he adjusted the elevation turret, dropping the shots towards the bullseye. With a fresh target, he made final adjustments, dropping several pellets in the same hole. This is an operation of trial and error. We then took the operation outside, even though winds were gusting pretty good. Paul sighted in and dropped some field targets at about 35 yards downrange. That's some seriously good shooting. Sorry you caught me eating some squirrel. Eric Henderson here with American Air Gunner. Not only do I hunt big game with my air rifles, but I also hunt small game like squirrel. Speaking of squirrel, join my friend Bill Dempsey and I and his brother John Dempsey in southwest Arkansas while we hunt squirrel with our air rifles. Tastes like chicken. Eric Anderson here with American Air Gunner. Uh, we're out here in southwestern uh, Arkansas, this north of Texarkana, and here I have with me John Dempsey from Texarkana. John, it's good to have you here on the show. Thank you. Um, what are you shooting? I'm shooting a Beeman R1 in 22 caliber. Well, I've had it about seven years, and I got it because I was tired of shooting squirrels with a shotgun. Right and I wanted more of a challenge, so I started uh, investigating air guns and decided to buy this one. It's washable. And you made this yourself? Yes. Now that's a nice stock. Now this is Macari stock. Right, Macari stock. And you finished it yourself? Yes, it also has Macari spring kit okay. in it. Do you know uh, the velocity? And uh, I would estimate around 750 feet per second, 22 caliber. We're going to cross over this levee and there's several large trees along this levee. We're going to see if we can see anything in those trees. I see up there. See where I'm pointing? There he is. There's a shot. There's a shot. That's a good shot. Yeah, it was. About 35 yards. Just a head shot. Yeah, that's a little thing now. There's your head shot right there. Take him. Nice. There he comes. That's a big old male. Old male. I think I big hit, I hit him in the shoulder. He's probably three time. or four years old at least. Yeah. Boy, he's tough. Small uh, fox squirrel with the uh, Marauder 22 caliber. Benjamin Marauder. CO2 action pistols are a lot of fun to shoot, and just because it's cold outside doesn't mean the fun has to end. If you have a basement or a garage with at least 10 meters or 33 feet of shooting space, you can break out your action pistols and shoot them all winter long. Now, we don't recommend shooting BB pistols indoors, as the steel BBs are hard to catch and may ricochet around the room. However, lead pellet action pistols are no problem if you have the proper backstop. 
like this heavy duty pellet trap rated for 22 caliber rim fire, the angled backstop to flex and catches the pellet fragments, and remember to always wear your safety glasses. Now, many action pistols like this Colt 1911 from Umarax are exact replicas of their firearm cousins. This one has the same weight, safety mechanisms, and feel as the firearm. So, it's perfect if you're looking for a low-cost alternative to practice your firearm shooting. You can add accessories like this combination laser and flashlight to pistols like this Beretta PX4 Storm to give your replica that authentic look and feel. To check out the entire line of Umarex Action Pistols, visit umarexusa.com. A lot of air gunners like to hear the plink of pellets and BBs against solid surfaces like these metal targets. Some of us have even felt the after effect of a plink on a solid surface. Ow! A ricochet. BBs are notorious for ricocheting. The hardened steel bounces off of flat surfaces and can come right back at you. There's at least two ways to protect yourself from BB ricochet. The first and most important is to wear eye protection. Always wear safety glasses when you're shooting and even when you're performing maintenance. The second way is to make sure your target is in front of a heavy blanket or another impact absorbing background like these hay bales. Softer surfaces are the key to absorbing the impact and reducing bounce. Well, Paul, what do we have going on here today? Well, Crystal, I thought we'd come up to the Air Lodge and just have some fun. Okay. You know, when I was a younger kid than I am today, my father used to take me to Coney Island in Brooklyn, and we'd stuff ourselves with hot dogs at Nathan's mm -hmm. and eat, you know, clams on the half shell. But my most vivid memories was the, the carnival games. Mm -hmm. And one of them had air guns. They had one that looked like a Thompson submachine gun. Mm -hmm. And they had another one that looked like uh, an anti-aircraft gun. It was a big box with a handle on each side and a big old iron sight. And they shot BBs, and the object was to shoot the star out of the center of a target. If you did that, you won a Cupid doll. Cupid doll is a stuffed animal. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, these things were notoriously inaccurate, okay? The guy was just reusing the BBs that he captured from behind mm. the, the shooting gallery. So those things were like square, yeah. you know? And I've never seen anybody win at that game. That's a shame. You know, I used to see military type guys go up there and think they're all snipers and stuff like that, but they never won. But do you remember any kind of games like that when you were a kid? As a matter of fact, I remember um, around the area that I grew up at county fairs, they had racing games right. and you would line up and you would use a water pistol okay. to try and hit the target. Oh, and I remember those. A horse or a car. A car, yeah. yeah. I remember the horses. And <laughs> there was also another one where you had to shoot a stream of water into a clown's head and a balloon would inflate yeah. on top of his head yeah. and the first one to pop won. Now, those, those games were cool because some kid always won that. Mm -hmm. There was always a winner, you know, but I've never seen anybody win and shoot out the star. But I've got some cool BB guns here today. Okay. And we're gonna try our own shoot out the star. These are called the IZH Baikal Drozd. This is a BB pistol and it's got some really cool features. First of all, it's completely electronic. Mm -hmm. It runs on CO2. It uses these 12 gram powerlets and it holds 30 rounds of BBs right here in the magazine. The coolest part about these BB pistols is that you have rate of fire. You can do a single shot, three shot burst, and a six shot burst. Oh wow. On the other side, we have a switch to change the rate of fire. 300 rounds a minute, 450 rounds a minute, and 600 rounds a minute. Okay. Neat stuff, <laughs> isn't it? The coolest part about this air gun being all electronic is that there are guys on the internet who have hacked 
the motherboards inside there. Mm -hmm. And now they're getting thousands of rounds wow. per minute. There's also a version of this that has a hopper that holds hundreds and hundreds of BBs. They also have a bulk fill CO2 version mm -hmm. that has an 88 gram cartridge and you can shoot all day with it. But we're just gonna try and shoot with the 30 round magazines. We'll fill them up, I guess, go for four times. Okay. All right, we'll try to knock that star out of the center. You wanna give it a shot? I'd love to, but yeah. do I win a prize or stuff down? Well, I don't have any Cupid dolls, but we'll work something out. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, Crystal, I'm sorry to say, it looks like I didn't win either. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that, we have a little bit of yellow star there. Yep. And on this side, that means... Nobody gets a stuffed animal. Nobody gets a stuffed <laughs> animal. I'm foiled again. Ever since I was a kid, I'm foiled by shooting out the star. Anyway, these air guns are a lot of fun. Yeah. I would recommend them to anyone who wanted to, you know, shoot BBs all day long or even set up their own at-home BB shoot out the star gallery. <laughs> It was a lot of fun, wasn't yes, it? Yes, it was. Yeah, cool. Hey folks, Eric Henderson here with American Air, Air Gunner. I screwed that one up too. Uh, this episode, we're gonna be... We're gonna be screwing up. 